$69,199.13. What's going on everybody? Your boy Quan Valdez back with another video and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I made $69,199.13 on autopilot with Shopify drop shipping. So uh, to kind of get started, uh, a lot of you guys may have already heard my story, you know, kind of how I got started, how I've been working my way up. I didn't just go from, you know, doing no work to just having money come in on autopilot without doing anything. That whole online thing that some of you guys hear about, it's not 100% true, right? There is work that gets that goes into it before you start seeing results. But once you do, you know, it gets really fun and really interesting. So I'm gonna share with you guys how I was able to do that and you know kind of share with you my story with you guys and how you guys can potentially do it as well if you guys want to see more videos of how i'm able to generate these numbers every single month make sure you drop a like in this video of course if you have any questions along the way make sure you drop them in the comments below and of course i'm going to get back to you guys and if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button join the v fam the v fam is a family of individuals that are striving to do a lot more than what society is out for us to do and one of those things is crushing it with drop shipping so let's roll baby here's a screenshot i can't fake it that's just a screenshot of my store just finished a month off right here so it was actually a total of seventy thousand four hundred eighty six dollars i had some returns so it came down to sixty nine thousand one hundred ninety nine dollars and thirteen cents the reason why i was able to you know get these kind of results again it isn't just from one day it's not an overnight success right there's been months of this in the making specifically to have you know these kind of results on autopilot definitely take some time and a strategy behind how to do it. So what I want to kind of go over is just a strategy that you need to have and implement to, you know, get results just like this. So how I got started is really by learning, you know, all the ins and outs and drop shipping, right? When I would like to talk to people about, you know, e-commerce and drop shipping, I always like to give them the bigger picture, right? Because Shopify drop shipping is a lot more than just finding a hard product, making some money and that's it, right? It's a lot bigger than that, right? The skill sets, again, that you're learning from learning, you know, how to set up a website that converts, how to find hot products, how to market, how do you have a backend system in place? Those are all valuable skill sets on its own, apart from you know drop shipping itself, which is obviously a great opportunity where you can generate you know a good amount of revenue and money from. One of the first things I did when I first got started is I took the time to learn about all the different parts that there is to running a six-figure e-commerce business, right? One of the first things I learned is how to set up a store that actually converts, right? There's a lot of different things that go into play you know, when it comes to having a successful Shopify store, right? It's a lot e it's a lot more than just setting it up real quick, you know, rent some ads and that's it. Like there's a process that goes behind it. So uh, I, in one of my previous videos, I did a review on this book called Influence and it talks about the different weapons of influence, also known as the cognitive biases, which is uh, the marketing tactics that, you know, Warren Buffett's business partner, Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger do within all their companies, Coca-Cola, Geico, for all of you guys that don't know, all those huge companies are owned by them. They use these specific weapons of influences, weapons of influence and cognitive biases to market. And that's why they've been so successful for such a long time. Learning about the different colors. And I know some of these things like Macy's like, duh, you know, we already know that, but I want to make sure for those of you guys that are brand new, or maybe you're having some, you know, some trouble right now, you maybe have hit a little bit of a plateau. What makes people react better? We have split tested different things, believe it or not, different colors within our store to see, you know, what does a lot better, right? We split tested different add to cart buttons to see what does better. And the way we do that, for those of you guys that don't know how to split test, uh, you can download, there's an app, Lucky Orange on Shopify, and this app lets you see what traffic you know, literally lets you see live of what, what happens when people come into your store and what they do on your website, right? So that's obviously super important because we have split tested having, you know, a red add to cart button, a, read, a, a green add to cart button, and we've gotten a lot better results from the green add to cart button, right? Humans, we're used to, you know, red light being like stop since when we drive, obviously we see a red light and green light is usually like go. So I feel like maybe that has something to do with it, but I'm not sure. I'm just going based on the statistics that I've seen from the split test that we've ran. And when I mean we, me and my business partner, um, Samir, some of you guys may have already heard about him. Uh, I had him come in for the Facebook video about how to set up a store that actually converts is studying other people's stores. Honestly, there's a ton of different ways you guys can find out other, other find other different Shopify stores. Honestly, if you just go on Facebook and you type in the name of any kind of product, a specific AliExpress product that you may have found that you think may be hot, you can literally do research by going on the Facebook search bar, type in the name of the product, and you can see all the people that are advertising that product, right? 
then from there super simple you just click on their page you can go to their website and you can see you know how they have their store set up things that they're doing and a whole lot more now i'm not saying that every single store you land on is going to be the best store but one of the ways you guys can find some of the really top performing stores is by finding some of the top performing ads for specific products right there used to be a ton of tools that you can use to uh, find different ads that people are running from shopify stores but these tools keep getting shut down. They don't want us to win. I don't know why. Uh, I'm on the lookout to find a new one to share. Uh, well, obviously with our P2P students, for those of you guys that are watching, but also uh, obviously, you know, the VFAM here on YouTube, I want to share that tool with you guys as well. But there hasn't been a new one that come that has came up that has been really effective. But for now, one of the ways you can find other people's stores and also find ads for your products to kind of get some ideas and examples is you can literally search on Facebook uh, type in the name of the product, find the ad that has the best engagement. Also, find the ads that have the most recent engagement because that's also huge. And what I mean by the engagement is a lot of likes, comments, and shares. Find the ones that have the most recent engagement and you can use those same ads to model and also uh, you know, realize what kind of stores it takes to have to get you know performing results like that. It's good, but if they have recent engagement that means that they're still running the product it means that they're still doing really good with it so that's what i would do i would spend a lot of time studying other people's stores because of course i wanted to see what kind of things differentiate my store from somebody else's store right and what advantages i can have so that's something you guys can do how to properly do product research i see a lot of people that you know claim that they do product research but in reality all they do is literally search on AliExpress and Google and that's about it, right? They don't have like a thorough process. So I have a video if you guys wanna see on doing product research and how I do it. But you wanna make sure that you're finding products that people actually want. And what I mean by that is low ticket is just more inexpensive products anywhere from like zero to $20, but also high, tip, high ticket products anywhere from $50 to maybe $500, right? You wanna have you want to do product research on a variety of products because you don't only have to be limited to inexpensive and low ticket products. You can test out high ticket items. You want to find products. Products that have done really well for us are products that people usually need a lot more than one of, right? You know, usually like disposable products that you just need one more than one of. And I also look for products that have multiple options, maybe different colors, different styles, things like that. Those are the kind of products that I look for personally. If you guys are going to do product research, effectively you want to make sure you actually have a product you have a process in place and you know what kind of things to look for you're not just looking for random products you got to think about yourself compared to everybody else that's trying to drop ship everybody and their mom is trying to sell something on shopify you got to find a way to differentiate yourself so this is one of the ways you can do it you want to make sure that the strategies they're using to market are obviously up to date and they're effective so what i usually recommend you want to start with instagram influencers to get data and to build that Facebook pixel, right? Everybody's trying to run ads and they're doing the same kind of targeting and you know the, the ads are starting to look the same and a whole lot more. So you wanna start to get data without having to run those same kind of ads because everybody else is doing it. You wanna, again, find ways to stand out. So one of the ways you can do it is you can start testing for really cheaply with Instagram influencers just to get some data going. After you get data, you know, on your Facebook pixel, you have a much better chance of actually doing a lot better with, you know, with your targeting, with your ads, because now you at least have some data and you know, you know, what a customer, your Facebook pixel knows what a customer looks like. For those of you guys that don't know what a Facebook pixel is, I'd recommend for you guys to look it up. We started right with Facebook ads, uh, simply because Samir, my business partner, had a lot more experience with Facebook ads. You wanna obviously start off with Instagram influencers, but you wanna transition into running Facebook ads and really scaling with Facebook ads because Facebook ads is what really is gonna allow you guys to scale a lot more because with Instagram influencers, like you can keep doing them, but it's not really gonna take you to the next level, right? Where it's like running on an autopilot type of deal. Once you find a hot product, you know, you have your budget there. Once it's doing really well, you then just increase your budget and obviously you make a lot more sales. Make sure you also are utilizing Facebook retargeting. That's huge because basically not everybody that sees your ad either through Instagram or Facebook is gonna buy right away. That's just life, you know, people come in, uh, they're buying, they're looking to buy something. Somebody get a text or they see a good post on Instagram. They want to like it. Boom, boom, boom. They get distracted. Then they don't end up finishing their order, right? So that's just life. That's just how it works right now. Nowadays, our attention spans are, you know, really finite. So of course, like, not everybody's gonna buy 
right off the gate, right? So you, again, you wanna make sure you're retargeting because we're retargeting, it's another way to get in front of that customer again and show them not only the product that they came in to see, but also related products that they also might be interested in. Learning how to upsell and downsell effectively. And for those of you guys that don't know what upselling and downsell is, is basically when somebody comes in to buy whatever product it is that they came in to buy, you guys wanna make sure if you're gonna upsell and downsell, you're doing it after they input their credit card info. We've tested this time over time and every single time we try to upsell the customer before they buy or downsell uh, it ends up turning them off and we end up actually losing the sale or you know having them not buy at this on the spot they end up having to come back at a later date to buy uh, but this is just an important part of e-commerce that i learned because again now that i learned this skill of having upsells and downsells in place it's something that i'm not only going to do from obviously my shopify job shipping business but i'm also going to do you know, if I'm gonna have any other kind of products I'm gonna sell online, I'm gonna do the same exact thing, right? I hope you guys are getting value from this video. If you guys are, of course, drop a thumbs up for the boy. And any questions you guys have along the way, just drop them below, I'll get back to you guys. I learned how to set up a backend system with email marketing. This is huge because it allows you to capitalize on traffic that doesn't convert on, on first visit. And we already went over this, people get distracted so they don't buy. Having these emails in place, helps out with that. For those of you guys that don't know what cross-selling is, it's simply where when a customer buys one product, you can then offer them an, a cross-sell product, which would be a product that may be similar in some form or way, but another product that you have to offer from your store. So if somebody came and bought leggings, maybe you might want to offer them a bra, uh, just other kind of products that you have available, right? So you put a cross-sell through emails, and you're also able to get repeat customers, which is obviously huge. Now the conclusion, right? I learned how to build a team and automate my business. Now this is huge because again, Again, I wouldn't be able to generate the kind of results that I get on autopilot if it wasn't for the team, right? The team that I have in place. We didn't really touch our store at all. I mean, we went in, checked in, make sure everything is good to go. But almost all that like was literally all done by the team that we have in place, which is huge, right? That's a huge advantage because what that does is it allows us to leverage, of course, other people's expertise. Uh, it lets you focus on the money making activities, right? So once you start getting orders and things like that and like a ton of sales, you don't want to be spending a good portion of your day, you know, fulfilling orders when, you know, product research and fit, setting up Facebook ads is a lot more important, right? Those are what we call money making activities. So you want to make sure that you're able to, you know, learn every single part of the business. So after you learn it, you can then outsource uh, some of the things that don't require you to do personally, right? That's something that I learned early on. It allows you to do other things, right? So that's obviously super important because we're not trying to be here working 10 hours a day fulfilling orders, product research, setting up stores, Facebook campaigns, all of it in once. That's how it was at first, but now it's a whole lot different. Take the time to learn all the parts of the business, you know, learn, take it one step at a time. Don't try to rush it. Don't try to just, you know, quit after one product doesn't work or maybe three products don't work, you know, stay consistent and, you know, just keep hacking and jacking it. You know, as long as you guys follow a plan and you stay consistent, you know, you're bound to get results. There's a lot of people that I see crushing it day in and day out. I get tons of messages. I hope you guys got value from this video. Again, if you did, make sure you drop a like on this video. Any questions that you have, drop them in the comments below. And of course, if you haven't already, join the VFAM, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.